To demonstrate the power of ceramic chemistry, I'm going to fix a very troubled glaze using a very interesting material. And so to do that, I'm logged into my account at insightlive.com. I'll click Add, and I've got the recipe on the clipboard. I'll paste it in here, and then I'll click Confirm, Interpret as Text. Now you can see that a couple of the materials here are not being uh, found in the materials database. So I'll edit this recipe and this should be G-200 feldspar and the Gersley borate is misspelled here. I'll save. I'll click done. And this glaze is a good example of what people will put up with to get something that fires the way they want it at least has the appearance that they want because this glaze is crazing, it's blistering, it's pinholing, it's settling like a rock in the bucket and it's dusting on the wear, it's not drying hard. So let's just survey the materials that are on this recipe. First of all this feldspar, there's 50 percent of it in the recipe, that is almost certain to cause crazing because feldspar is the principal source of sodium and potassium which are high expansion. Um, this barium carbonate well, there's going to be leaching issues with that. And also, notice it has 22% CO2 that has to gas out of the glaze during firing. Calcium carbonate or whiting, 43% carbon dioxide that have got to come out. And that's going to contribute to the blister and pinholing, obviously. Gersley borate, 29% is going to gas off during the firing. And then with Gersley, there are uncertainties about consistency. And then the kaolin, there's only 3%. That's supposed to suspend the slurry and harden the glaze. So obviously there's going to be issues there. The Gersley borate helps a little, but it's not very plastic. The only material that seems to be sort of normal in the glaze is this silica at 17%. Okay, let's take a look at the chemistry of this glaze. And to do that, to adjust the chemistry and look at it, we usually click this to go into a special mode. Um, we'll look at this in a moment, but down here, look at the calculated expansion. It's off the charts, and that's because of the high sodium and potassium. The glaze also has fairly low aluminum and silica compared to other cone 10 glazes, coupled with boron, which is a powerful flux which you normally don't even see in cone 10 glazes. And so, obviously, this is going to be a fluid glaze. That's probably one of the reasons why it has an interesting fired surface. Now, uh, I don't really want to have the red iron oxide or the rutile participating in the chemistry. So I can turn those off right here. And so down here now my formula is a bit shorter and more manageable. Okay, so now let's do some changes. There's just so many ways to improve this glaze. But I'm only going to do what is practical right now. I'm going to leave the crazing and the barium leaching issues for now, assuming it's non-functional. But I need to supply the CAO, the B2O3, and the BAO from non-gassers to reduce the blistering and the pinholing. And for the slurry and drying issues, I need kaolin, EPK. It supplies a lot of Al2O3, 37%. And the major contributor of that right now is feldspar. It has 18%. So I need to reduce the feldspar to make room for the kaolin. And that's going to reduce the KNAO. So I'm going to need to supply it from something low in alumina, Al203, to retain room for the kaolin, and high KNO to replace what is being lost from the feldspar. Everything hinges on that. And that kind of material is very unusual, but it does exist. And it's called FRIT F644. So let's find that frit. I'll go in materials here. I'm going to search the reference materials as well and I'll type 644 search. There it is. Notice it has 29 percent sodium and only 6 percent alumina. That's perfect. Now while I'm here I just want to show you more about this material so I'll click here and that'll take me to the Digital Fire reference library which will have more information and more up-to-date information. Um, notice the supplier, Fusion Ceramics. If I click here, 
it'll take me to a chart of all their frits um, but this frit is not on the chart because it's not a common frit but I do know that they still do supply this frit now if we go back there for a minute take a look at this a related material is frit 3110 so let's go back and take a look at that for a minute if I put an, a vertical bar in between the 644 and 3110 that means or look for 644 or 3110 search here we are so I'll click on ferro for 3110 and here's the chemistry yes it does have a lot of KNAO but it's giving me a bunch of other stuff that the 644 doesn't give me especially the B203 if we go back to the 644 look at it, it's got almost double the amount of sodium so that's better so I'm gonna make a duplicate from this recipe I don't want to delete, I want to duplicate. Here. Now I have two. And over here I'm going to edit. And I'm going to remove half of the feldspar. So let's put like 25% feldspar. Maybe I'll put 30. And I'm going to replace the whiting with elastinite. And it's going to take a little bit more. I'm just going to guess maybe 15. And the Gersley borate I'll replace with frit ferro frit 3134 I don't know how much that will take I think it takes less I'll leave it at 8 and then I'm going to click save I'm not going to do the barium right now and then I'll go done we'll have a look okay so I'll add the frit to this recipe I'll add one line I'll just zoom out a little bit and fusion actually I don't even have to type that in I can copy it from here and then just drag it over and it's going to take a lot I lost 25 parts of um, feldspar but I probably can make it up with 10 parts of this frit I'll save and then I'll go done and I'll turn on calculation mode and then I'm going to turn off the rutile and the iron I don't need to see those in the calculation because I'm going to want 2% iron oxide and 6 rutile regardless of what the calculation says to get my effect. Now I need to match up the chemistry here with the chemistry here and I'm going to start with the most complex material first, the one supplying the most oxides and that'll be the FRIT 3134 and I'm going to supply the boron with that and then I'll go to the FRIT 644 and I'll supply the KNAO and then I'll supply the calcium with elastinite, the barium with barium carbonate, the Al203 with the kaolin, and the SiO2 with the silica. Now to supply the frit, I'm just going to type B2 in there, you see what that's for in a moment, and then frit, I'm going to click this little up arrow to increase it by one. This is the amount that's being increased by right here. So now, because I type B2 up here, it's highlighting the, the B203 column. So I just need to put a little bit more frit. A little bit more. And now we're matched. Now to supply the KNAO, I'll type KN up here. And I'm going to adjust the frit 644. So let's put it up. So now, oh no, we're going to put it down. So I just need to get 0.33. But that's good. Now for the wollastonite, I'll type CA up here. And we'll take that down a bit. So I need to go down to 0.51. We got it. Now again, I could go up a hair, whatever, but that'll be close enough. Now the next is the BAO, but that's already the same, 0.13, so I won't need to adjust that. So now I need to do the K, the uh, alumina. So I'll type AL, and we'll start increasing the EPK. Now we've got a long ways to go, so I'm going to change this to a 5 up here, and each time I increase it, it'll increase it by 5. Okay, that does it good. I'll put it back down to 1, and we'll go down... go up by one. Okay, that's good. And now the last thing to do is the silica. So I'll type SI. So 
we'll just keep pressing that until they get down to 3.26. You probably noticed that the KNAO is no longer matching, and that's because this is a unity formula, and the fluxes are retotaled to one, and so when I change one of them, then the others change as well. So it's a bit of a moving target. I also forgot about this MGO here. I really should put a little bit of talc in this recipe, maybe one or two percent to supply that and then readjust everything. So what I need to do is I need to reduce the Fusion Frit F644 to cut the KNAO. I need to increase the the molassonite a bit to bump up the CAO and then I need to adjust the kaolin and the silica to match up the AL203 and the SiO2. Now the last thing I need to do is retotal this recipe because the original one totaled 108. There was the 100, the 100 parts and then the 2 and 6 iron and rutile. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to edit and then I'll put in I want a total of 108 but I can't just click retotal here because I want the rutile and the iron and the barium to stay the same, 7, 2, and 6. Okay, so now I'll click retotal, and there we have it. So it totals 108, and those are still the same. Now, because I made that small change, I might have to adjust the chemistry slightly, but it looks like it's pretty close. So these, the chemistry of these two lasers is very, very similar, practically the same. Um, our new recipe is more complicated, we have more materials, but there are ways in the next stage to simplify this and at the same time resolve the crazing and the possible leaching. But anyway, um, the new glaze should pinhole and blister much less, it should dust less, it should suspend better as a slurry, and it should apply better to the wear. And now tell me, how would you do all of this without ceramic chemistry?